Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers. Now trigonometry is fun, complex numbers are fun, and trigonometry with complex numbers is double fun or fun squared. Great, let's go ahead and take a look. Normally if you had a cosine equation like let's say cosine of something, it could also be something like an alpha, equals one half, you would kind of look for an angle whose cosine is one half, and you can find that easily uh, if you are familiar with the unit circle. First go with the smallest angle, and in this case that will be, you know, pi over three, right? 60 degrees, pi over three radians, and then you would just add multiples of two pi, and then that would give you some of the solutions. And then you would consider the fourth quadrant, subtract this from two pi, or you could write this uh, with plus minus sign, or some even in some cases, people put negative one to the power n, multiply by this as the solution, okay? Anyways, you could find the solution easily, but with the complex case, things are more complex. Things are very different, right? Because you can't find an angle whose cosine is e to the power four plus one, divided by 2e squared. And it's probably a number that is greater than one anyway, so we're not looking for real solutions, plus it's not a special value. So what are we gonna do? We're stuck? No. Thanks to Euler, we have a formula that we can use. What is that formula? Let me quickly give you the formula first, and then I'll tell you where I got that from. Cosine of theta can be written as e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by two. And by the way, theta does not have to be real. This is true for all complex values of theta, okay? So this is gonna help us, and notice that the expression on the right-hand side kind of fits this pattern where we have powers of e all over the place, right? Well, with minor differences, we'll fix that. So, where does this come from, right? Good question. So it comes from Euler's formulas formula formulas e to the i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta euler found out this expression i mean which is by the way beautiful amazing just mind-blowing unbelievable anyways whatever you call it so cosine theta plus i sine theta and e to the power negative i theta if you replace theta with negative theta cosine is even so it's just going to absorb but sine has to spit it out so it's gonna look like this. And then you go ahead and add these equations up, cancel out the sign, and divide by two, you'll get the formula. Get the idea? Hopefully you did. Let's go ahead and use this formula, okay? Great, now, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And like I said earlier, this does not have to be real. So now we're gonna replace theta with z plus i. Let's do it on both sides. So cosine z plus i is going to be e to the power i times z plus i. Challenges with um, notability or the, I don't know what it is, the pen maybe. Okay, let's see. e to the power i times z plus i, and then plus e to the power negative i times z plus i, and I'm going to divide all of that by 2. And this is supposed to equal the expression above, right? This one. So how do we set those equal? So here's one, one thing we can do. We can simplify this one as much as possible. So let's do it. First of all, I can distribute the i. That's going to give me e to the i z plus i squared, which can be written as minus 1. And then the second part is e to the power of negative i z. Of course, that's going to be the opposite. So it's going to be a plus 1 divided by 2. Now, in order to get an e at the bottom, we can kind of work both ways. So I can kind of divide um, or multiply the top and the bottom by e to the power negative 2 to make this expression, the original one, look like this. Or I can work with this, either one. So let's kind of stick to this. Let's go ahead and stick to this expression. I'm going to use this. And notice that this is the reciprocal, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write it this way. e to the power i z minus 1 plus... 1 over e to the power i z minus 1. Notice that the exponent will be negated. Divide by 2. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and make a common denominator, e to the power 2iz minus 2 plus 1 divided by 2 times e to the power iz minus 1. Awesome. So now, this looks very much like our original expression, which is e to the fourth plus 1 divided by 2e squared. How? You might be asking, right? Well, if you look at the coefficient, first of all, we have the twos that correspond. And then here, if iz minus 1 is equal to 2, then 2 times that should be a 4. Get it? So it kind of works, but can we just solve the problem like that? Or is there another way to do it? So I'm going to use substitution here. Let's go ahead and call, call this w because I don't want to deal with the complications. Like this is complex, but also very complicated if I don't use this. So actually, I made a mistake, and never mind. Uh, we are supposed to call this one w. So this will be 2w. Make sense? So it will be e to the power 2w plus 1 divided by e to the w. And right now, you can actually see much better because now the patterns completely match, don't they? Wait a minute. Did I forget the 2? Yeah, I always forget something. Now, here's what we're going to do next. Cross multiply, right? Okay, and we can do one more substitution. Allow me to do that. Let's go ahead and I can't call it Z, can I? Let's call it U. So now I have, and this will be U squared, right? Okay, U squared plus 1 divided by 2U. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. Okay, get the birthday song. And now our goal, remember, is to solve for U. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. We get this. I know the results are obvious, but... Or not always obvious. So we need to kind of do the work. And then we're going to distribute it. When we distribute it, we're going to get 2e squared u squared plus 2u squared. Notice that we want to turn this into a quadratic in u, right? And by the way, I can actually keep these two together because that happens to be the coefficient of u with the 2. So I can kind of keep it like this, right? And then bring everything on the same side. By the way, Notice that I can divide by 2. I could have done that earlier. But anyways, just cross out the 2s and then bring these all together. e squared u squared minus e to the power 4 plus 1 u plus u squared equals 0. Oops, I mean, what? Are you serious? Oh, I made a mistake. This should be 2e squared, not 2u squared. Okay, there's like, nah, that's not supposed to be a variable. That's supposed to be a constant. So I got e squared u squared minus that, plus e squared. Okay, here we go. So this should be an e squared, sorry about that. And now this is our equation. We could divide by a's e squared as well, but let's not do it. Let's just use the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 2ac. That's going to give us e to the fourth. And then all of that is divided by 2e squared. And let's go ahead and expand inside the radical. We're going to get e to the 8th plus 2e to the 4 plus 1 minus 2e to the 4. And then divide by 2e squared. And then here the 2e to the 4th is going to cancel out. We are left with this plus this. And that was not what I expecting. What I was expecting actually. I was expecting something nicer. This should, we should be able to, I don't know if you made any mistakes here. Let's go back and check. We have u squared plus one divided by two u, and that is e to the fourth plus one divided by two e squared. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure we do this carefully. Two u multiplied by e to the fourth plus one, and then two e squared u squared plus two e squared is equal to this. And that would be the coefficient of u, that's correct. And then e squared u squared minus e to the fourth plus one u plus e squared. Okay, we probably made a mistake somewhere. Let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four. Okay, here we go. It was supposed to be a four ac. I put a two ac. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. We got it. That's going to be a four and I think that should work well. Because now it's going to bring us 2 minus 4, and that'll be a minus 2, and it'll work just fine. Okay, the inside the radical we're going to have now minus 2e to the 4th plus 1 
Yes, this is what I was expecting. And now I'm not gonna cut this so you get to see my mistake. But this is now e to the fourth minus one squared. All of that is divided by two e squared. If you take it out, you're gonna get with the plus minus sign, e to the fourth minus one. And then let's go ahead and split it up into two solutions. Now remember, these are the u values. We still have to go back substitute. But if I take the first one as a plus sign, and let's see, one cancels out, I get two e to the fourth, divided by two e squared, and that'll be e squared. So one of the solutions is e squared. Let's remember that. The other solution is gonna be e to the fourth plus one, minus e to the fourth plus one, divided by two e squared. e to the fourth is gonna cancel out, we're gonna get two over two e squared, and that'll be one over e squared, or e to the power negative two. So what is u? u is, or u are, e to the power w, great. So e to the power w can be e squared or e to the negative two, which means w is two, uh oh, w is either two or negative two, great. This is helpful. And now what is W? Let's go back and back substitute one more time. W is IZ minus one. Great. So W is IZ minus one. If it's equal to two, then we get IZ equals three, Z equals three over I. And if you multiply the top and the bottom by I, if you multiply top and bottom by I, you're gonna get negative three I, okay? And this one is gonna give you something interesting. Iz minus one is equal to negative two. It's gonna give you Iz equals negative one, and Z is gonna be negative one over I, which is I. So there are two solutions. One of them is negative three I, the other one is I. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.